probably one of the biggest things, in my opinion, and the reason that I say jerkbaiting in the post spawn period has been overlooked a little bit, so many people consider jerkbaits that cold water presentation. I mean, yeah, we've all thrown a floating, you know, twitch bait from time to time in a post spawn period, but most people think of jerkbaits more in the pre spawn period than they do in that post spawn period. And I think just jumping ahead, the simple fact to the reason I'm talking about this today is it's not a secret any, anymore. I mean, you look at what's happened in Bass Live and Major League Fishing. I mean, last year, and I missed it. I'm going to be the first to admit I missed it. We got a Ross Barnett in dead on post spawn period. I mean, I'm thinking a buzz bait, I'm thinking spinner bait because of the dirty water that Ross Barnett is mostly known for. Never even thought about a jerk bait. There were two or three guys that finished in the top five of that event that were throwing a jerk bait at Ross Barnett in the post spawn period. It was exposed on live. If we didn't have that live coverage, nobody would have known what they really caught them on more than likely. But uh, there's been a lot of tournaments over the years that a jerk bait gets utilized a bunch in the post spawn period. And uh, the reason for that is really just where the bass are positioned that time of the year. I mean, during that post spawn period, I'm going to say, you know, probably 90% of the fish population in a lake has come shallow, they've spawned, and most of them are still up in the upper water column of the lake. And when I say the upper water column, you know, maybe you're talking the upper 10 foot of, of depth of water. Well, you can cover zero to 10 foot pretty effectively with a jerk bait. So that's one of the big reasons. The other reason is so many of these fish are garden fry or they're just trying to feed back up from going through that spawning period. You know, they've, they've spawned, they've, they've not fed and they're hungry, but uh, they can be really, really aggressive at times. And there's a lot of times that you have to coax them into biting. And that's another reason, in my opinion, a jerk bait can be so effective. It's a bait that you can fish extremely fast or you can still stick with the suspending model of jerk baits, the 95 and the 110, and you can catch those fish that you have to coax into biting. Um, when it comes to rigging the soft jerk baits, <clears throat> I'm going to rig them two different ways. Um, probably 80% of the time, I'm going to rig a soft jerk bait with a barrel swivel. Probably 90% of the time, I'm going to use a spro barrel swivel that I'm going to tie to my main line. And a lot of times, you know, my main line may be 16 or 18 pound uh, sun line. You know, depending on, uh, most of the time I'm gonna throw just a straight fluorocarbon on a soft jerk bait because I'm usually either fishing it fast enough that I can keep it up, or if I do wanna slow it down, the fluorocarbon's gonna help me get the bait down a little bit. The barrel swivel not only helps get the bait down a little bit, but it, allows you to take the twist out of the line. You know, a soft jerk bait's really bad about rolling as you, as you fish it. So the barrel swivel is gonna take that twist that you're gonna get created in your line out if you don't throw it. And then the other thing it does is it allows you to change your leader size. You know, a lot of times I'll throw 16 or 18 pound main line and I'll drop my leader size down accordingly to the water color or how I want that bait to react. Um, I also will vary my leader from fluorocarbon to monofilament. If I want that soft jerk bait to dance around and come up near the surface, I'll put a fluorocarbon, or I'm sorry, a monofilament leader because monofilament has a tendency to float a bit more. So when I'm twitching that, the swivel is actually making that bait be more erratic in the water, but the monofilament is actually helping keeping that swivel up in a sense and keeping that jerk bait closer to the surface. So when it's a two part deal, the swivels, you know, pulling your line down a little bit, but it's making the action of the bait a lot more erratic. The other thing that you can do with the application is you can put a double jerk bait rig, especially soft jerk baits on by using that swivel. I always tie another swivel above it. So it's sliding up and down the line and then I'll tie a shorter leader, which we can't fish that rig in bass anymore, but back when we could, that is a super effective way to catch bass in, in the post spawn period is on a double, you know, soft jerk bait rig. It's just a tremendous way. Generally, I like to mix my colors up. If I'm throwing a double 
you know, jerkbait rig. I'm going to throw, you know, one that's real, you know, probably wide or bright or something on, on one of the baits. And then the other one might be more natural, a watermelon color, a baby bass color, something of that nature. Gives the fish, you know, two different looks as it's coming through the water. So it's a big deal in my opinion. Um, the other thing, and you know, I, I don't know that everyone would categorize it that way, <clears throat> but the Major League Fishing World Championship that we were talking about earlier, where Creek caught them so good on, uh, you know, just a trick worm. A lot of guys typically when they throw a float and trick worm. Bass University TV, an online video training course where you'll learn champion bass fishing techniques from pro anglers Pete Gluzek, Mike Iconelli, and their talented special guests. Watch hours of video content on multiple topics at your own pace for a low monthly fee. Cancel at any time. Subscribe today.